Hello to Sky. <laughs> Say hello to the camera. Look at the camera. Sky, look there. Look there. Okay. I'm gonna put you down, okay? Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another critique video. Today we're gonna to be looking at three images from a landscape photographer, Nick Becker. He's based out in St. Louis, Missouri, and we're gonna be looking at the idea of visual languages. So Nick studied linguistics at college, and we've been having some great chats over on Instagram uh, about this concept. So Nick has sent in context surrounding each image, and I thought it'd be an interesting exercise to change things up a bit. Um, I'm gonna go through the images twice, the first time with no context and no words, and see if I can uh, unravel some of the meaning behind the images. And then again, I'll uh, go through them after having read the words and see what that context provides to my understanding of the images that Nick has sent in. So without further ado, I've got the images loaded up in Lightroom and Photoshop. Let's go ahead and jump in. Try and keep the first run through fairly brief and then we can delve a bit deeper when we have some of Nick's context. Um, these are his three images that he sent in and one of the ideas that Nick and I have been talking about is a lexicon of words uh, or visual language that is dependent on the landscape that you're working in. Um, and we can pretty clearly or I can pretty clearly see three pretty distinct landscapes. The first one definitely appears to be in some sort of open area uh, with lone trees. The second is in a, some kind of woodland, and then obviously the third is a more mountain alpine landscape. Um, so if we jump over into Photoshop quick, so I can draw on these, um, we'll have a quick talk through. So this first one um, with either the, the birch or aspen, sorry, I don't know the American trees all too well, starts to build this very interesting relationship with its surrounding environment. So the way that Nick's built this image from a sort of design language point of view by cropping off the horizon and isolating the tree against the sky immediately brings those two elements into dialogue. The way that this tree is either in early spring or it appears to almost be diseased or uh, being affected by drought, set against that stormy sky that's hopefully bringing rain uh, is a very powerful way to describe the environment through a set of building blocks that that Nick has uh, sort of observed within this particular landscape. So he's effectively building a dictionary of the elements that he's uh, interested in within the landscape and then somehow deriving meaning from that. In this case, it could be the drought and the rain and that sort of storytelling aspect. And then he's deciding in some sort of visual way, how does he combine, combine those elements and compose them in a frame that illustrates to the viewer the meaning that he's trying to impart. So that, that's when I say he's you know, cropped off the horizon is so that the focus is on uh, the relationship between these two elements. Let me jump in here really quick and just ask if you are enjoying the videos, then please do like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps to support the channel. Thanks so much. Let's get right back to it. Going on to the next one, it shifts uh, tone here going into a more wooded area. We have a more subtle play of light um, as well as a much more complex landscape. The way I in interpret this image is to do with uh, all of the veins and the structuring of these plants. And it's about a, a wonderful complexity of life and the sort of intricacies of how the details of all of these little organisms and the cell structures and the microorganisms that live within creates a symbiotic landscape for you know life to live in. Um, and I think that's 
effectively communicated here through um, the choice of using a, a wide open aperture. So you get a sense of the detail set against the, the blurry background, um, which still contains the same structure um, from a, an aesthetic and visual point of view. So Nick is very aware of how he's interacting with the landscape through the medium of photography and the lens. And in that way, he's taking a very considered approach to finding meaning uh, and his the way that he constructs images. The third image takes us immediately into a different landscape. And so there's a different set of visual syntaxes and uh, his dictionary changes. And therefore the visual design of the image also needs to change and react to the inputs that Nick is working with. Um, this obviously has a sky and a horizon line. So we're now dealing with um, a particular place rather than the sort of ambiguity that is held within the previous two images. And so some of the things that Nick is employing here is a set of uh, crisscrossing diagonal lines that really draws you uh, further into the image and it's subtle layering that goes all the way through the image and draws you from bottom to top. And it actually continues within the sky with the, the, uh, the layering of the three cloud banks there. So from that point of view, I think Nick is uh, cleverly introducing the geological language of the area. Um, for me, the, uh, the crop is a little bit too tall. I find uh, something more like a, a four or five crop for, sorry, one second. A four or five crop usually works a little bit better in, uh, in vertical frames. Um, but yeah, there are a few things that I think are slightly distracting um, on the, the bottom of this frame here. So I'm not quite sure how would be best to organize um, some of these visual elements along the bottom of the frame. But yeah, I do like uh, the main scene. There isn't one standout subject uh, as there is in the other two images but I feel as though that's not what this image is about. This image is about uh, the landscape and the layering and some of the geology, um, as well as potentially the interaction between the snow line and where the trees sort of stop growing along the, uh, as the, sorry, as the elevation of these mountains gains. So that's my take on the three images. And now I'd like to read you the context that Nick provided and talk through whether um, what I see as being communicated in the images held up versus uh, when they're paired with words. So it's as a photographer and an artist, always being aware that images have a life beyond you, uh, the creation and what you intended as an artist. When someone views your work, they're always going to be bringing to it their own experiences and emotions and reading it in a slightly different nuanced way. Sort of question I suppose that I'm posing is how close is my reading to it, uh, what Nick's original intention was. Um, so here's what Nick had to say. These images are approximately half of a little series made in a single day of hiking in Colorado. So while there is a theme, it's a loose one, and one that considers both aesthetic and natural variety. Image one is intended to convey unsettling darkness and isolation. This tree stood alone against the stormy sky, creating quite a striking scene on the way down from a short hike to the summit of a low mountain. Image two is intended to convey a soft, quiet serenity. This one was made shortly after image one in an aspen grove at the foot of the mountain. The breeze was creating quite a lot of movement in the leaves, so I waited for a pause to make this image. Image three is intended to convey classic, in the landscape photography sense, boldness. To me, it represents a breath of fresh air 
It was made on top of a 13,000 foot peak looking down with a blue sky and layered mountains stretching to the horizon. So I hope you found Nick's words interesting compared to my interpretation. Uh, I wasn't aware that these were made in the same location, nor, <laughs> nor on the same hike. So I find that uh, very fascinating. Overall, I would say that Nick's work is very effective in communicating his original ideas, uh, especially the, the first image. It's a very graphic illustration, and I think the, the sort of relative simplicity of the visual elements that he's employing here really helps to evoke that emotional response of sort of unsettling darkness and isolation. So I think the processing on this actually really fits that uh, intention as well. You know, the, the very subtle detail that's left in the tree, um, not creating complete silhouette leaves us wanting a little bit more, wanting to know a bit more, and that is quite unsettling in itself. Image two, Nick talks about wanting to convey a soft and quiet serenity uh, and the breeze creating a lot of movement in the leaves. So I think the idea of trying to portray that sense of peace that you can get in the woodland when you're surrounded by the sound of rustling leaves um, is a very strong uh, auditory and sensory experience. And um, I know Nick, as a photographer, places experience first over image uh, over the final result, um, as do I. However, I think the link between those two things maybe isn't quite as strong in this image. So he's waited for a pause to make the image, and he's obviously used a very wide open aperture. And to me, that freezes the, the movement and in and of itself then doesn't allow the viewer in to the auditory component that these trees would have been making as they moved in the breeze. So I don't know if there was some sort of way that uh, Nick could have worked in intentional camera movements or using a longer shutter speed to capture that movement. I think that potentially would have made for a stronger image, um, but I can sort of see where he's coming, coming from uh, with this collection of very sort of calm and soothing uh, leaves and just getting lost in some of the, the, the fine detail. I don't know, maybe this one might be enhanced by having um, a sort of more high key edit. I think the, the sort of very gray tonality across the majority of the image is letting down a bit of that uh, quietness and serenity, whereas the previous one has the mood and darkness and that fits the intention. This one, from an aesthetic point of view, needs uh, the brightness and levity to convey that quietness and peace of, of the woodland. So that, that's something uh, Nick can play with. I won't do uh, an edit here in this video just because I think we're talking about something that's quite rich and um, the post-processing side, Nick, I'm sure, can play with on his own time. And um, lastly, the final image where Nick was talking about a sort of classic landscape photography boldness um, and a breath of fresh air. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the raw file. In the raw file, it's those punchy blues and the atmospheric haze that really, uh, to me, speaks about you know the breath of fresh air. You can f almost feel the maybe a slight breeze and that crisp alpine air um, for anyone who's been to the top of a, a very tall 13,000 foot peak. So in a way, the, the color of this image is very important, uh, a very important part of the visual language towards expressing that uh, breath of fresh air. And when you convert it to black and white, and especially when you play with some of the um, tonalities in that blue sky and bring them down. I think you lose a little bit about you lose a little bit of that um, fresh air feeling. So I think my reading of it, where I'm looking more at the layering and the geology and um, the relationship of this mountainous alpine landscape to 
the trees and the tree line below might be a way into that um, idea, but I'm not sure if it's if it's quite strong enough um, to hold it on its own in black and white. Potentially, if we go into the develop module and try maybe even a, a slightly different crop. I'm not quite sure what uh, lenses and things Nick was working with here. He said it was all on one hike. Um, so he might have been restricted with his focal lengths. Something uh, with a tighter crop, or even if you had a, a horizontal version of the scene, where you're taking off some of that sky and uh, removing some of the sort of blank foreground might bring those uh, visual elements into conversation a bit more. So talking about that relationship of the trees, the mountains, and uh, the blue skies and the clouds. And again, for me, it's about that sort of understanding of the uh, sort of precipitation cycle uh, and the atmosphere that that creates when you're up in these alpine environments. So I hope that was interesting and Nick, that you found some value in this discussion. As always, this is just uh, my opinion and it's a, you know, a starting point for discussion. Um, so I hope that these critiques are providing value both to the participants and to anyone else who is giving them a watch. I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>